Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. I'm Mark Rudin, and today we're going to hang the whiskey plank on the Catalina Wherry. Now, the whiskey plank is the last plank we hang on a boat, and it marks a real turning point in the construction process. On a boat building crew, this is usually cause for a minor celebration, so somebody will break out a bottle of whiskey and it'll get passed around for a toast. Hence the name, Whiskey Plank. Now, we can't have that toast without doing the work first, so join me now while we hang the whiskey plank on the Catalina Wherry. So we're down to our last plank. The bulk of this has been done in one week. At the beginning of last week, we just we still had a mold with just a bottom on it. Before I pop this off the mold, I've got a whole bunch of work I'm going to do. Uh, I think I'll probably run a bead of the low viscosity epoxy down along all the plank laps here just to make sure that there's no tiny little voids and also just to seal up the end grain of all these plank laps. I plan to actually come along here and put a bead of thickened epoxy in as well because these little sharp corners they're just dirt catchers I don't really like them I'd rather see a softer bead in there and I think I'm gonna put the bottom on and the, the cut water on before I pop this off the mold it seems to make sense to do that now everything's really rigid and of course we've got the rub rails to put on and I'm debating whether I want to put them on now with the boat upside down or if I want to wait till it's flipped over but we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves we still got this plank to hang so let's get going we'll start by dressing up that scarf I left this one a little bit sloppier than ones in the past so I'm gonna use a lining batten to try and sweeten up the line that we're gonna follow with our plane I'll just pencil in that line And once again, we're going to get out our laminate trimmer with a flesh trim bit, and we're gonna trim that plank to its final shape by following the batten that's lying just below the plank's lower edge. The ability to trim that plank to its final shape in place in conjunction with the ability to quickly trace out the shape of the plank before hanging it are the main reasons for using this battened system. It really is a big time saver. It completely eliminates the need for the usual spiling or pattern making process and by scarfing in place as I do it eliminates the need to pre-scarf your planks. Now a variation on this method that we could explore is we could make those battens permanent. We could have notched our mold and then let those battens into it so they're locked in place and then we could have used ultralight planking over top say four millimeter or even three millimeter gluing the edges of the planks to the battens and when we're done we've created the structural girder at each lap that includes both plank laps and the batten itself that would make for a really robust boat we'll be using something called a cut water which is like a separate stem that's applied to the face of the existing stem and it protects the ends of those planks Using this method eliminates the need to try and fit our plank ends into a rabbit. We can simply run the planks past the face of the stem and then cut them flush later on. Now the cut water also protects the ends of the planks at the stem which would otherwise be subject to all kinds of abuse. Now we don't do this at the transom, we just cut the planks off flush. There are occasions where you'll see the ends of the planking at the transom covered up with something we call fashion pieces, but that's not something you're going to find in lap straight construction. Okay, back here, we're into our last run and our gains might be a little bit different. And so what we need to do here is basically line up a straight edge with the edge of our transom here where the plank overlaps and carry that line up. And so we don't have a formal gain or like we would normally have. Now we just have a, an area where the basically one edge of the plank bevels off to meet the edge of the transom here. These battens also allow us to use a plane modified with an extension stick to very quickly create the winding bevel that joins one plank to the next. Creating this winding bevel is possibly the most intimidating task faced by the new builder. But by using the method demonstrated here, the bulk of that challenge is eliminated. 
Okay, now there's a danger here of the plank edge coming down to a zero thickness at the edge, and we want to avoid that. We want to stop at the last veneer. So I probably can't quite do that right here at the transom edge. I need to taper it out, but a little farther back here, I need to be conscious of the fact that I may have to stop short of my line. That's not a big deal. So I can do two things with the actual finished plank. I could finish the plank off right to that bevel, or I can just continue the line as designed and let the plank protrude up and we'll fill that little gap in the back with a fillet of epoxy. That's the route I'm planning to go. Fitting our last set of planks. Uh, so back here, back here, I got a little thing I need to deal with fitting wise. I need to notch for the uh, transom ear. And so what I thought I would do, I would just do this. In a perfect world, we want this angle right here. So I put that up there. There we go. All right. Just drop that down on there. Yeah, that looks good. Now what I want to do is make sure I roll it into position here, starting at the transom, and uh, yeah, I really need to I need to clamp it up higher there to get this to fit right. So just clamping it down below doesn't always do it. You need to often you need to clamp up high, like right where the lap is, to make this work properly. So that's the back end fitted here. Inside, we're going to mark the bottom of the, the plank lap. I should do this from behind where I can see what I'm doing, though. Run my pencil along here. Get that. Okay, so with that marked, I can take this off. Good. Okay, now I'll do the bow section. Can't get a clamp to stay in here properly, so just tack it in place. As I watch myself do that, I'm thinking maybe I should have been tacking these planks in place the whole time instead of clamping. Okay. Good. I want you to note that I've put a spacer in here, the thickness of the planking. And that's to make sure that this has the right attitude, because if it's kicked in like this, it's not going to give us the exact same sort of reading. It's going to change the shape of that plank a little bit. doesn't seem like much, but sometimes it can really make a big difference. And I find I really got to make sure I'm stretching this thing. Otherwise, I don't have the length for the scarf properly. Well, I can make the scarf shorter. That's what I would have to do. 
I don't have the length, but uh, that looks good. So I'm going to go inside. I'm going to trace it out now. Start here at the stem. Pop this off. And there's our finished plank shape. So I need to add our lap width onto the top of this. What I think I'll do is just, um, I'll just use some, somewhere here, where is it? Got a little chunk of batten here that I use for doing that. There we go. So we'll use this to mark a few spots and then we'll spring a batten through it all to make sure it look, looks nice and fair. If it isn't obvious, I should have a batten already sized to be the same as the battens on the mold or the lap width, which is the same 5 eighths of an inch. But all the battens I cut, I used on the mold and I wasn't smart enough to cut an extra batten for this particular purpose. That was kind of dumb of me. I should have been better prepared. But in my own defense, I wasn't planning on marking out a plank this way either. I do have quite a few battens hanging up on the racks, just none of them happen to be 5 eighths of an inch. But that gets me thinking. A well-prepared boat shop should probably have a good variety of battens sized incrementally. So maybe you have half inch, 5 eighths, 3 quarter, seven eighths, one inch battens, each one representing a different potential stiffness that you might use in the course of building boats. So normally you'd see me doing this with um, finishing nails, of course, but we're just gonna try and whip it off without finishing nails, just by springing to our points. The reason I would normally be using finishing nails instead of clamps to hold this batten in place is that the finishing nails allow the batten to move around a little bit and spring to a fair line, whereas the clamps will just kind of hold it rigid at every point that you put a clamp. Maybe it sounds like I'm just splitting hairs, and I'm sure using clamps works equally as well as using nails, but using nails is the way I was taught to do the job right, and so that's the method I tend to favor. That said, we're using clamps here today. It'll get this job done just fine. There we go. And we just sight down it, make sure it looks like a nice line. Yep. Okay, this is the last set of planks to cut. Table saws ready to roll. Gear balls plugged. Mask up. Fans on. Now what I'm doing right here, being able to cut my gain with a saw in place and then plane it with a rabbit plane in place, we couldn't do this with a traditional one piece stem. It's only because we're using this method where we add a cut water later on and at this stage our plank ends are exposed that we can get away with using the saw and the rabbit plane to cut these gains. Now while adding the cut water is extra work in some ways, there is a great advantage in time and effort being able to do this bit of work without the interference of that cut water. And so for a beginner, this is probably a simpler method, even though we've got two different operations to create that stem. And of 
course, we can check that our gain has got the right attitude by using a stick down to our batten below, just like we would do with the plank lap anywhere else. So I think I'm good now. I'm going to pop this off. Now we can offer up the gain to the boat and have a look. And that looks really nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. We got our hood end, everything marked out here. There we go. Okay, now I can mark my scarfs, put on my blocks, and I'm ready to go with this plank. Pop this off over to the scarfing bench, and then this is ready to hang. Of course, I need to mark where my scarf is going to land for my blocking. All right, uh, yeah, I am tired. It has been a long week. Been working hard. We had pretty good progress, I'd say. Some of our experiments have worked great, and some of them have been yeah, meh. Okay, so it's like that. So this little innovation with the the nozzle, this has definitely been a great little piece of work. Um, I'm going to do my wet out on the other on on the boat itself. We'll come back and do the wet out on the planks second. I like to do that end grain first because I want time for it to soak in while I am doing the rest of it and then I can come back and apply the thickened epoxy. Now I know I am going to run out of the thickened epoxy. I've only got part of a tube left. It definitely is not going to last. So uh, it's not going to make it. So I'm going to have to switch over to West system the remainder and I, I almost run out and bought like a West system version of this stuff there's 610 but uh, in the end I said ah save myself the 20 bucks 25 bucks whatever it is One of the ways you can support this channel is by buying some products from Total Boat. You can get 5% off your purchase by following our affiliate link down in the description. Now while you go do that, I'll finish installing these whiskey planks. Because I'm never really happy without wearing a belt and suspenders, we're going to throw just a few nails into the transom here. Do the same thing at the stem. Not going to put them everywhere, but I'll just pop a nail in at the laps, just protecting against the unforeseen, you know? The chances this epoxy would let go is very, very, very low. 
But, um, you know, sometimes the surface of the wood the epoxy is hanging on to lets go. So we're just going to use ring nails. And we'll punch them down with a, with a punch here. And I want to set them a little bit below the surface of the wood because we're going to putty over those with, um, with fairing compound so they're buried and hidden. Need a heavier hammer. Now I'd normally do this during the planking process because normally I don't use the pin nailers to hold things to the stem and transom, but uh, that's the only reason nails aren't in there already. Just a little bit of a lip around everything so the epoxy will grab. That's great. That's going to make me sleep better at night. While hanging the whiskey plank is cause for great celebration for most, for me it mostly just marks the end of another workday. I will crack open a beer satisfied that I did a good job, clean up the workshop and get ready for the next stage. This time however I celebrated by producing this Catalina Wary sticker and one of those can be yours if you join me over on Patreon. It's because of the support of folks on Patreon that I can take the time out of my workday to make these videos. So if you're enjoying them, maybe you can help me out over there. You can find links in the corner or down in the description. If you can't do that, that's cool too. You can still like, subscribe, and share, or maybe just send me a couple of bucks through the super thanks. Just click that little heart button on the bottom of your screen. Now please join me again next time when we start doing the trimming details on building the Catalina Wary. See you later, folks.